Hello everyone, my name is Barashan and this is my official list of the top 25 comic book movies. Uh, these aren't necessarily the best of the best. These are what I personally think are the best. So let's get this list started. Mm, number 25, Hellboy. It's been a long time since I've seen the movie. Well, I do tend to own both the first and the second film in my DVD collection. All the actors tend to do a fantastic job, especially Ron Perlman as the title character, who, who also packs in an amount of humour into the role. Also, the intro for the film where they introduce Hellboy as some some young mutant character is was also a perfect introduction for Hellboy as well. Number twenty four, The Shadow, also one of the most underrated comic book films in history. I don't know really why people seem to hate that. Film. I'm still failing to understand why. Um, I personally think it's good. It has a, si a simple story, also with a complex introduction for our main for our main character, played by Alec Baldwin. And also, I I, bet I really much like a title character as well. Mm. I think I think I'm starting to get why people don't like that movie very much because mm. the shadows is, is too much of a simplified character really but I personally thought it was pretty good number 23 blade um, also one of my favorite vampire movies of all time. Um, I like how they kind of updated the, the what the Blade universe and the, they made them um, Deacon Frost all all young and badass and instead instead of make, instead of making him look all old and it would just make him look s stupid. Mm. Whereas our two main actors, Wesley, S Wesley Snipes and Stephen Dorff, just own the screen. I remember when I first watched this movie as, as a teenager and it just blew me away. Number 22, um, Kick-Ass, although I haven't seen the sequel yet. I'm um, hopefully planning on to seeing it. Um, Aaron Taylor Johnson just wants to um, nail the role as the title character. The movie was pra the movie was praised for its realistic violence. I think um, Nicholas Cage and Chloe Grace Moritz were given the perfect introduction as. Big Daddy and Hit Girl, and so was Christopher Mintz Plus as Red Mist, Red Mist, who in the sequel be known as the Motherfucker. When I first saw the poster for th for the first Kick-Ass movie in a cinema far away, I got to see this movie and. I definitely did. Number 21, B for Vendetta. This is another movie that when I first heard about it, I just said to myself, I have to see this movie and I managed to see it. Um, it was praised for its realism and given the high ratings for the same reason as well. The actors just steal the show every time they're on screen. 
Hugo Weaving, he, by wearing, by dressing up as B, an unknown man wearing a Guy Fawkes mask, he made us remember, remember the 5th of November. Number 20, Wanted, I absolutely just adore this movie, it just constantly twists and turns in every direction imaginable. Uh, a main, our main character played by James McAvoy, he just steals the show and he is a total badass. His training montage and and all his action scenes are just so awesome. The fight scenes are just p pure brutal so it's not for the faint hearted. If you are faint heart hearted and and you really want to see this movie then I may recommend this movie. Number 19 Man Thing um, another underrated comic book adaptation um, um, I, I do understand why everyone hates this movie but for me person, personally I thought it was good um, even though it was a long time I've seen this movie it's supposed to be like um, a, a monster horror movie and it succeeded at that it was given it was it had a decent story written and it, it also succeeded at that as well even though it, even though the story was very forgettable number 18 X-Men 2 X-Men United um, out of all the X-Men movies the second film was my favorite because um, it just had the biggest assemble of all the X-Men characters and that's why I personally like it like the movie of course we had the build up to um, the Phoenix which of course led to you know Jean Grey being a split personality and X-Men 3 which we don't want to discuss um, of course we've said it so many times in the past we shall say it again Hugh Jackman is Wolverine he looks like Wolverine he acts like Wolverine he, he of course is Wolverine Number 17, Scott Pilgrim vs. The World. Now, going into this movie, I I know nothing about the comics, but but over the years, people have been talking about how awesome the movie was. So I decided to give it a watch and. And, and like Blade, it just blew me away. All the, all the, all the special effects, loaded fight scenes, and the colorful sets were just amazing. And and it may be one movie that will stay on my list for quite a long time and it will stay on many people's lists too. Number 16 Fantastic Four Rise of the Silver Surfer I just don't understand why all the Fantastic Four movies have been hated so much I mean the Roger Corman version was bad I can understand why I do hate it as well but the 2005 reboot directed by Tim Story and its sequel Rise of the Silver Surfer they were definitely good enough why would you hate those? 
for me the sequel was be better than the first film because I personally think it was more darker and and that's how I personally have viewed the Fantastic Four universe although they originally started out as kid friendly also we get to see um, the Silver Surfer as the title say so Doctor Doom comes back and we see um, Galactus's cosmic cloud all in one movie and the Human Torch who's my favourite out of the four his powers get changed whenever he touches someone which I thought was a cool power I also own the DVD so I'm lucky enough to watch the movie over and over again number 15 Daredevil is the another big underrated film it was hated for one reason only which was Ben Affleck was playing the title character which was such a bullshit reason to hate on the film if you're a fan of the Frank Millen graphic novel then you have no reason to hate this movie at all it was pitch perfect close to the comics and I personally thought it was good it was really dark and grim as well and because of that our main hero played by Ben himself is now going to be the future Batman but sadly there's no sequel to this movie and it's now going to get a future reboot number 14 The Punisher I haven't seen the sequel to this I'm also planning to watch that as well I thought the whole origin story for The Punisher was was just perfect and Thomas Jane nailed the role as the title character the action scenes were just badass and John Travolta also nailed it as the bad guy number 13 Captain America the first Avenger Chris Evans is Captain America also his backstory was just perfect and I can't just I can't wait for the sequel The Winter Soldier and Evans also nailed the role once again in The Avengers which I'll get to later on number 12 Iron Man I don't know how many times people have said this in the past but Robert Downey Jr. is Tony Stark and the angst between him and Iron Monger also known as Obadiah Stane was was perfect the action scenes were done well and by far it's personally I think it's the best Iron Man movie to date number 11 Thor people have basically described Thor as one of Marvel's lamest heroes as the equivalent of Superman with a toy hammer but this movie proves that he is none of that and he is the Norse God of Thunder and that is all the then newcomer Chris Hemsworth who, who was also Captain Kirk's dad in the Star Trek reboot was a, was a solid enough choice for the title character and Tom Hiddleston also was a great choice for Loki and was a well enough 
choice for the villain in the Avengers. Number 10, Ghost Rider Spirit of Vengeance. I'm a huge Ghost Rider fan and Nicolas Cage just owned the damn role. Every time he just turns into the Ghost Rider, I just think to myself, oh, oh yes, this is going to be good. And I just love how he swings that chain around and burns people to death. And when he finally gets to the, to the main bad guy, I'm always hoping for something good. Ghost Rider is also one of my favorite superheroes of all time, along with Wolverine and Spider-Man. I've already crossed Wolverine, I'll soon be getting up to Spider-Man. Number 9 is The Incredible Hulk. Hmm. Everyone knows that Ang Lee's Hulk was pretty bad. I mean, I remember watching that movie as a kid. I thought it was pretty good, but then later watching it as an adult, it was really bad. Then now I own the reboot on DVD and I actually really like it. Edward Norton owned the role as the Hulk and Tim Roth was an excellent choice for Emil Blonsky also known as The Abomination. The fight between the two as in the climax was just epic and we also get to hear the Hulk say his iconic catchphrase. Number 8, Spider-Man 3, you know what, fuck the haters, I just love the movie, I own it on a separate disc all by myself and I just love watching that movie over and over again and I just stand by my own opinion. I just like how Harry Osborn became the new Goblin, I like the creativity behind the Sandman and his backstory. I like the same thing what the, with what they did to Venom as well. They should have done more with and built it up to Spider-Man 4 but you know sadly we we got the reboot which I think is the worst movie of all time and of also the worst adaptation of all time and the worst comic book movie of all time and I still refuse to see that movie as well and so along with its future franchise. Number 7, The Mask. The movie itself it's, is supposed to be um, a, a dark movie but the director knew how to make it light hearted and somewhat for kids. Um, Jim, Jim Carrey managed to pull the role as the mask off very well. It had some weird action scenes that were quite entertaining, dare I say it. Number 6, Sin City. It was, this was a movie that was praised for many reasons because of how dark it was, of how brooding it was. I praised this film for the same reasons too. All the actors do a great job. Um, Director Robert Rodriguez did a fantastic job at directing the, directing the movie and I can't wait for the sequel. For me personally, I thought the one who steals the show def definitely has to be um, Bruce Willis as John Hartigan in, in the movie. Uh, because technically the whole story is about the whole movie is about him. Number five, The Crow. Honestly, one of the most emotional comic book adaptations I've seen to date. It was a Brandon Lee's last starring role, May You Rest In Peace, who you may remember as 
the son of Bruce Lee, but apart from that, the movie was was also dark and brooding, and it had it had a few brutal action scenes, mind you. They explain the legend of the of the what of the crow in very good detail. Number four, Superman the movie. This movie is easily one of one of the best comic book movies of all time. Why what can I say about it? Um it has some of the best action you'll ever see. It's an adventure pack for the family. What's what's not good about that? I sound like I'm advertising. For the late Christopher Reeve, may he also rest in peace as well, but he just owns as the title character and so do the rest of the actors uh, in their respected roles. But definitely. The ending was is quite unexpected. You'll never see it coming, trust me. It was the perfect backstory for Superman that I can protect this movie on. Number three, Batman Returns, one of the most underrated Batman movies in history. Um, I have no idea why people hate this film apart from the number one obvious which is Michael Keaton as Batman I, I don't know how many times people have said this in the past but he is way better than Christian Bale who sounds like he has he has throat cancer but apart from that they have complained that um, The, the Max Threat character played by Christopher Walken wasn't that interesting. The Penguin was way too dark and the story was overly depressing. But for me, I personally thought that was really good. Because who cares if it's way too dark? I mean, once it's dark, it's dark. It, there's no limits in it. Number two, Watchmen. This is one that us fans love the most. It one because it stayed shot for shot, note for note, to, and word for word to the comics. It felt like a comic book had come to life. And two is because it felt all the actors had actually owned the roles, especially Jackie O'Haley as Rorschach, whose performance was was just badass. And number three was the violence. The violence was was absolutely realistic, and it would just keep you on the edge of your seat. Trust me. And number one is The Avengers. Yeah, I know the movie came out recently and and that's a bit of cheating, but where do I even start? Um, the action's terrific. The characters are just own. All the actors that play the actors are pitch perfect. The villain's just a true menace, and there's just way more that I can list, and that's all. But so that's my list of the top 25 comic book movies. If you 
please like, please comment, please subscribe, and if you're feeling generous, also share as well. Uh, well, before I go, I do have two honourable mentions. No, one was Hancock from 2008. It stars Will Smith as the title character. Um, it wasn't based off anything. It was, it was just written from an original source material. And another was Unbreakable. It stars Bruce Willis and Samuel L. Jackson. From, and it was released in the year 2000. Um, Again, that was from written from an original source material. Um, yeah, so that's the reason why I didn't put those two movies on the list because they weren't based on anything. They just had an original concept. 